Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Ellie Behrman, your guide to demystifying your world. And you're joining us today at Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. Today's guest, Donna Meyer, has a background like no one I've ever known. Before introducing you to her, and the whole new perspective on wellness and marketing that you're going to discover today. I have a quick reminder for you. Do you wonder why your world keeps turning up the same every day? You know, to make a change, you got to first change how you look at yourself. And you got to change how you look at your world. You need to step in a new direction. And that's how change starts. And you can download your free 12 simple steps to see through new eyes. The link is in the show notes. Dynamite's journey started as director of transformations, a premier holistic learning center in New Jersey, where she produced numerous events with many speakers, including Deepak Chopra. Marianne Williamson, and Carolyn Mace. This is where she developed her skills as in effective marketing. Don is a certified business growth strategist and is certified in energy leadership. Sit up straight, perk up your ears, because we're about to take a surprising trip into a different way of being in the world of business marketing. And I do mean different. And for those of you who are not in business, listen carefully so you don't fall into the traps of the far too many marketers out there who have less than noble motives and intentions. That's all I'm going to say about that. I feel so grateful to welcome you, Donna Meyer, to our show. To say I was blown away by our preliminary meeting is a gross understatement. I love your smile. I love your energy. And as someone who's sensitive to energy, I wanted to keep talking and learning because I just plain felt at peace. And that's a feeling I like. And that rarely happens when I'm talking to somebody who's in the professional business realm, and especially somebody who's a professional business strategist. Now, I know when I do networking events or go on social media, my eyes glaze over by what seems to be an endless stream of business coaches. Like, what in the world does that mean? They all blur into one mass for me. And that's not how you define yourself. And it's definitely not how I experience you. So would you please tell us how you went from the career creating events in a major holistic transformation center into the world where you are now? Sure. Well, thank you, Ellie, for having me today. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, my journey was uh, is, is unique because I went to transformations, what I thought was going to be an admin job, and ended up uh, being the director of the center, uh, where I produced multiple events, not just the big events for the late Debbie Ford we did, uh, we did Donna Eden, we did um, uh, Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, Carolyn Mace, love Carolyn Mace. I mean, there was just, um, <laughs> and they were very well attended and because in South Jersey, they don't get many of these uh, speakers in, in that area. So uh, <laughs> it was exciting, but, but it was baptism by, by fire for me because I really had no experience in producing events. It was just like, okay, here we are. We have to fill these seats. And so when you have speakers that are that large, um, they 
you pay it on what they call an honorarium. And they don't care if you fill the seats. <laughs> they just they they have their money. <laughs> but the only way for you to recoup your money is to sell the tickets and, and do a lot of marketing. And so that's where I learned to do on and offline marketing. Wasn't a lot of online at that time. We would do interviews uh, with some of the speakers. We had someone set up to do that. But then uh, email, it, it was really a lot of email and a lot of networking and ads and things that made those events happen. That's extraordinary. I have been studying how to do events because I'm planning with the new modality I'm creating to do events. And I wouldn't begin to do them. I'll be up front. But that's a profession all by itself. And I got to tell you, I'm incredibly impressed that you figured out how to do something like that. Yeah, I can tell you a funny story about that. It was like the first event that I that I did. I had no idea what I was doing. And we rented a hotel for the late Debbie Ford, just a wonderful woman and and. and just she did the shadow work she she was just a beautiful person and we didn't know the day of that she was um be on the good morning america show now back in the 2000s it was un, not something that mainstream embraced uh those of you that have come up through the holistic field you'll know that they didn't interview anybody that was in that field, in the, in the holistic field. But she wrote a book, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People or something, something. And because that book was more mainstream, uh, her agent, uh, her name was Gita, got her on that show. But we didn't know it until it aired. And of course, everybody in this area saw the show <laughs> and now they wanted to come to see her and she announced it and so where we thought we were getting like a hundred people hundreds of people came <laughs> and the hotel was like it was blowing their mind because we had to keep bringing chairs in bringing chairs in people were it was standing room only um and and then we didn't have a real Pro, but it's not like today we didn't have any processing set up for, because people were buying her book so we had volunteers and that's all we had was writing people's uh, uh, credit cards on pieces of paper <laughs> it was it was like what you would really call baptism by fire <laughs> wow that's absolutely extraordinary and did you feel Oh, I got this now after an experience. Yeah, well, yeah, it was like, you know, you 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 go back and you regroup, you know, like you get through it. First thing is to keep everybody calm and especially the owner of transformations. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I got this, don't worry. <laughs> and you know, we got through it. It was uh it was exciting because it was our first our first event and um it was the first time Debbie had been in South Jersey too. So, um, I mean, all in all, people loved it. You know, nobody noticed that we were disorganized and whatnot, nobody cared. You know, they cared about her. And that was the biggest lesson I took away from that was that it doesn't matter what you look like. You know, even in marketing, I say this now, nobody cares what you look like. Nobody cares what your hair looks like. They care about what you say. You know, and so nobody cared about any of that. Nobody cared we were disorganized. They didn't even care they were standing. <laughs> yeah. They cared because the, to see Debbie, you know, and that she was actually saved us that night, you know, because she was so gracious. She, she was such a wonderful person. And, uh, and then, of course, you go back and you regroup and you say, okay, how can we do this better next time? <laughs> just, we can't do this again like this. So we got better and better. And um, at the time, even set up processing. We used to take our computer with us and do the processing, uh, just as though you were in a store. So we worked it out. We figured it out. And, and that's all our events went like that. 
Um, and we had a lot of smaller events, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, I'm a Reiki master because of it. I do pranic healing because I would take the modalities when people would offer them at the center yeah. because I, I felt like it was my job as like mother bear to make sure that anybody that came into the center was directed to the right modality. I mean, there are um, people like, uh, if you know jo uh, Judy Satori, um, she channels light, she's light language channeler. You don't want anybody that's a newbie coming in and listening to a, a light language and it scares them, you know, if they're not coming up and they understand what it is. So uh, I had to make sure that everybody that came in that asked questions that wanted to be directed to the right, what was right for them. Um, so I took everything, you know, and, and, but I was never called to be the healer, never called to be the light worker. What I was called to do was be the wind under the wings of people in the holistic field. That's so extraordinary. I love the way the universe works. And of course, our show is all about the invisible energies driving everything. And you just said so many things. It's like, whoa, 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 from my end. It's, I want to thank you, especially for saying people don't care what you look like. Because when I used to speak for Landmark Forum, they were really adamant about you have to wear makeup and you have to dress really sharp wow. and you have to look really professional. I don't wear makeup. I don't like makeup. Yeah. Yeah. No, they don't care. They care what you're saying that, you know, they're, they're initially they, they look at you in the, but then they don't even see after that, you know, it's just, it's all, all about the content. That totally makes sense to me. It, what I'm imagining is if you aren't engaging with the content, then you're going to be yeah. looking at how people. Yeah, are. then you're going to be judged. Yeah, yeah. And we do live in a judgmental society more now than ever. Um, but, you know, the, it drops. It, it's almost like it just vanishes when they're engaged in your content and you're engaging with the audience. That's I'm just seeing her thinking one of the most amazing people in my world these days. I'm learning how to do events and business and everything from him. And he does these events in a t-shirt. A yeah. lot of guys wear t-shirts mm -hmm. for their events. And it's like... And like, nobody even really notices until he says it. <laughs> oh, I'm in my t-shirt. Okay, are you really? <laughs> yeah, as long as you got pants on, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and there's usually a message on the shirt. So it's like, it's a very different world from... Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. And, and also the way you got volunteers to make everything happen that was no accident everything that happened the yeah. timing of her appearance on the morning show is like <laughs> i'm just sitting here in awe of how the universe had to make it all come together yeah they definitely did and we're very very fortunate because the owner and the founder of transformations was a self-made man he owned the hr staffing company so they, no clue what we were doing at Transformations, except that he said, come on, everybody, you're volunteering for this. <laughs> it reminds me, my mom, uh, my dad died when I was really little. And this was in the 50s when women didn't work outside the home. And she found work. She ran all three of her boss's businesses I doubt that anybody wow. could hear any of that stuff, but she made it all happen or his businesses would have died. Yeah. I think that we're, well, I don't think it would work for everybody, but somebody like you, somebody like mom. Yeah, it just um, happened. I remember one of the big, greatest compliments I ever got during that time was Carolyn Mace. You know, we would have lunch with them and, and yeah. dinner sometimes, you know, I, 
you know, I was the one that would pick them up at the airport and make sure their accommodations were oh. doing well and, 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 and they were happy. You know, the, the, it was important for us to make sure that they were happy and, and content and, and, and glad to be there, you know. And uh, Carolyn Mace at lunch uh, said to the owner uh, that, you know, he was lucky, you know, and you, you couldn't have this without her. And I just thought that was the greatest compliment, you know, that she recognized the value. Uh, and it was great because at her event, we had 800 people was, was something. We, <laughs> we, we totally maxed out the ballroom <laughs> at the Weston Hotel. <laughs> it was a very exciting time. I look forward to the time when we can have those events again. You know, they're starting to open up, but not as much, you know, as they used to be. Yeah, yeah, because people have gotten used to being online, and it's so easy. Hey, I don't have to leave home. Yeah, I don't have to right. make accommodations. But wow. It's cheaper. You don't have to fly somewhere and get a room, and yeah. you know, fly back. And you know, it's not even so bad like being at the event, but then you gotta you gotta negotiate so much of the travel nowadays, and it's still so it's still tricky. Yeah, and I just I. I adore Carolyn Mace. When I mm -hmm. had a brain injury in 96, it was her work. I, I had no short-term memory. And it was listening to why people, why some people don't heal and how you can or something like that. I right. was playing it until my brain was able to register it. And I wrote her a note and I thanked her for it. And she responded to me. And I was so impressed. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. That's the kind of person she is. Very down to earth. Um, she really is a wonderful person. And, and she's still speaking and active today. And that's yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So cool. And just wow, that's such an awesome responsibility, picking people up, making sure they're happy. But in my mind, it's a gift that you have that you could do that. Not just anybody would have been able to do it. And that's why you were in that position. I guess, I, I guess I, I really felt privileged to be in, in there, um, but I've never, one of my, I guess, talents or assets or something is I don't see people better than anybody else. So to me, they, they were very good at what they did. And I respected them for that, but I didn't fall at their feet, you know, like some people do, <laughs> you know, that I didn't, I didn't meet them at the airport and go, oh my God, you're here. <laughs> I welcomed them and treated them like I would treat, you know, my mother or my father, or, you know, respectfully and whatnot. But it, it was, it, it was just, um, that's just the way I am. You wouldn't catch me standing in line to get tickets to see anybody because I don't have that kind of uh, feelings, you know, like I just see people uh, do a really good job at what they do, you know, and they do. That's, uh, that's so extraordinary to me. I remember a woman saying that she had been in an event with Deepak Chopra and that night she went into the bar for a drink and he was in the bar having a drink. So yeah. it's seeing, they're just- They're just regular up. people. <laughs> they're just regular people. As I picked up John Holland, you know, John Holland, he's the psychic uh, um, medium, right? And I picked him up and I couldn't find him. I was standing there and the elevator escalator came down. He wasn't there. So he called me because we always exchange, you know, uh, cell phones. And he called me and I said, I'm here. Where are you? And he goes, I'm over here in the baseball cap. <laughs> and I turned around <laughs> and he, he looked like he was just came from vacation, you know, baseball cap. <laughs> That's, cool. That's cool. Yeah. Just regular people. I'm going to take a brief sponsor break for 10 years of speaking and blowing my nose with great, great challenges. That was until a friend introduced me to stem cell patches. In a few weeks, my nerves that were gone, they began to regenerate. And it might sound really weird, but my friends were saying, I understand you when you talk now. I went to the dentist, had my teeth cleaned, 
and I felt what she was doing in my mouth. I could blow my nose. I couldn't do any of that for 10 years. Get your body working again. Whether you have physical problems or there are emotional upsets, contact me. The link will be in the show notes. Remember that suffering is optional. So getting back to I'm enjoying, I always enjoy your energy. I enjoy being with you so much. Well, I enjoy you too. And I, I love being here with you. Thank you. I just, I get high when I'm interviewing people because everybody who agrees to come talk with me has extraordinary energy. And there's no such thing as time or distance. So I'm trusting that my epic adventure seekers are getting the same vibrations and the same feel-good energy. Then would you share your favorite part of the work that you do now? Sure. Um, well, when I left Transformations, I uh, actually, he closed. It was during the economic downturn. Uh, then he just really needed to put his energies into his uh, other business. And so he closed. And then I started um, Michelle White, though. I don't know if you know her. She's a psychic. And she called me at home. And I'd been laid off. And she called me at home. And she said, you know, I always hosted her every year. And, and I said, well, I'm not with Transformations. He closed. And she goes, but you can. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> but then I'm thinking, there's a psychic telling me that I'm supposed to do this. So that's how I started my own events business called Awakenings Connection. And I hosted her and I hosted uh, Lisa Nichols was gracious enough to come. Uh, and I had a big event with her. And by and by, I met Judy Satori and who is a channeler. She does late language DNA recoding. And um, I hosted her. And when I hosted her, she, her husband at the time, they needed help on getting their book out, Sunshine Before the Dawn. And so I helped her do the book. Um, and I said, look, I could, I, I'm also tech savvy. That's what makes me a little different than most uh, strategic um, growth coaches is that I am tech savvy. So I, I made her uh, book. I did the makeup on it. I turned it into an ebook and she got it out on the summer equinox when they were supposed to, when spirit told them they were supposed to. And after that, I started working with Judy a little bit at a time. And then her husband had uh, parted. And so I helped her build her business for the last eight years, I guess for about seven, eight years, I was with her. So doing all the marketing, all the email, all, all that. So that's where I got a lot more, you know, uh, of my training was with working with her and building her business. And then in mid 2020, we went different ways. And I, that's when I started Glow Media Marketing. So the excitement that I have is to help my clients and I know how to do it is to help them create their compelling message so that they can attract their right fit clients mm -hmm. and get leads and make money. Which sets you apart for most people who call themselves marketing coaches or experts who are- Well, there's a strategy to it. Yeah. You know, there really is. You can't, what I see online is a lot of shiny objects. And so if you're starting out, you don't have your compelling message together. So there's all of those shiny objects is never going to work for you because you, you never going to attract who you want to work with because you don't have your message honed in. You know, it's great to be an energy healer, but how are you helping people? I mean, if you're in the field, the holistic field, you understand but if you're trying to reach out to the mainstream, you have to tell them just exactly how you're going to help them. If they got back pain or they got emotional pain or you got to tell them exactly. 
and that will make them, will attract them to you and they become your right fit clients. It's like, and just, that's what, and that's, and then you put the right marketing in the right order, the strategies, and that's what I love. I love to make that happen and watch my clients uh, grow significantly uh, more than they ever knew they could. And there are just no accidents. I just spent three days and I have another um, get together with the person whose workshop I was in for three days doing exactly what you just described. And you know what? I just wound up more and more and more confused. So <laughs> I definitely need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, anytime. I, it's just, it's very simple, but yeah, but you have to start in the beginning. We had to start with the basic. If you don't start with the basic, if you don't get your compelling message down, if you don't know who your right fit client is, then all of the marketing in the world isn't going to work because you'll never get them to be clients because they don't even know what you do. And that's so accurate. I know so many talented, gifted people in the healing arts who don't have thriving businesses. And I think it's because they, like me, are using more esoteric language and we're not speaking yes. to the people yes. who need us. Yeah, and that's why, you know, in fact, that's what Spirit told me. That's why we trained you. That's why, and they did, you know, between the training and the, you know, going to be a coach. And I did that when I was at Transformations because we had an alliance because that particular school that I became certified was IPEC and it was based on energy healing. It was based on energy leadership. It was based on all the same principles that we uh, aligned ourselves with at Transformations. See, I've never heard anybody say any of the things that you just said. And it's like, it's no wonder so many of us in the field struggle to get out there. And then what I see is even though they have special gifts, they wind up looking just like everybody else who are just- exactly. Yeah. generalizing they're not really saying anything and all. they're not meet, they're, they're not meeting the mainstream because they don't understand you know and the only thing they understand is they have a pain and who's going to solve it you know whether it's a problem or a pain and who's going to solve it and how you're going to solve it that's all they care about that's all that any consumer cares about yeah. but if you're not telling them how you're going to solve it if you're not identifying their pain and that you can solve it then, then, then you you don't attract those clients, and then you say small. And I, I don't. I think we need to be bigger. I need light light workers need to be bigger, and they we should overtake the world because we're the ones that could bring the peace. And that's so beautifully said. I had uh, Dr. Karen Can on a few weeks ago, and she pretty much said what you just said and it's like I'm going to be sure all of my friends in the healing arts know about you because you're such a rare combination you learned all these modalities you have an understanding and you have clarity like I've never seen plus tech skills holy mackerel you're it my experience you're a super gift to all of us in, in the in, in these other non-mainstream fields so I want to thank you for doing what you're doing especially I'm grateful that you were here today because I'm going to make sure everybody I know listens to our interview and they know how to connect and that's important I want to know uh, I know you said that you have a gift did you would you tell us about it Yes. Um, well, actually, there's two. You can go to my website and download a Simple Strategies book. Um, it's a free book. And also, uh, if you go to, and I'll give the link to Allie, and she can put it in the, the notes, uh, socialmediaplan.com. And this is a, it's sort of a strategic roadmap for your social media. 
it's just a start. Uh, and then there's a series of, of emails that go along with it that you'll get other other things that go along with it. But you know, what's the one drawback sometimes is that what do I put on my social media page? You know, this actually is a roadmap <laughs> to tell you what to put on. You can pick and choose. There's different strategies you can use. But um, and one thing I always tell my clients is that pick a day, you know, pick a Sunday afternoon or pick a rainy day or whatever you want to do and just take a few hours and actually put them in a folder. What do I want to post? What do I want to post? What do I... And then it just either schedule it uh, or just remember to go up every morning and post it. And it's so much easier than waking up in the morning going, oh, my gosh, I got to post to social media today <laughs> or I haven't done it in a week. Oh, my gosh, it's been two weeks. It's been a month. So consistency is is the best way to really attract clients to. So I have a clear picture. I've been following people not in the healing arts to try and learn social media. No wonder it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. One, like you said. There's a different strategies for different businesses. You know, if you were a brick and mortar store, you know, that's a different strategy than, than a healing arts. You know, you're you're dealing with something that's not tangible, really. And that's why it becomes more difficult. Um, that's where you can say, oh, I channel. Okay, so you channel what? And why is that? Why do I care about that? You know, I care about that maybe because I have a pain and if you're going to channel into my pain or you're going to do energy work on me or I'm going to get out of the pain, anything like that. There has to be a tangible. Absolutely. So yeah. I want to be sure people know how to find you and we'll certainly have all of your links in the show notes. That's great. I'd love to talk to anybody. There's a free strategy call. Um, I think I gave you the link, but I can give it to you again that you can jump on a free strategy call. Just chat, you know, where you are, where are you, how I can help you. Um, that's, that's like the greatest thing for me is to be able to offer my services. That's, I, I just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for so being so excited about sharing what you know, what you've discovered and not just blindly going out there, but know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, thank you, Allie. It's been a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you. And I want to remind all of you to join our Facebook group where you can ask questions, see special offers for different events, and you'll definitely see the posting for each new episode, as well as our website where you can see or listen to any episode that we've done. All the links we mentioned today will be in the show notes. I want to remind you to enjoy, that's capital I, N, capital J, O, Y, every moment, because you don't live your life out there. You live it in your body, in your mind. Mm -hmm. You don't see anything out there. It gets interpreted inside, hear, taste, smell, touch, it all happens within and I look forward to being here with you next time.